Good afternoon. Welcome to the April 6, 2022 meeting of the Phoenix City Council. I'll call the meeting to order and ask the clerk to call the roll. Councilwoman Ansari. Here. Councilman DeCicio. Here. Councilmember Garcia. Here. Councilwoman Guardado. Here. Councilwoman O'Brien. Here. Councilwoman Stark. Here. Councilman Waring. Here. Vice Mayor Pastor. Mayor Gallego. Here. Carmen Cota is with, with us here today to provide interpretation services. Carmen, would you introduce yourself? Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor. This is Carmen Cota. Um, soy Carmen Cota. Le voy a servir de intérprete esta tarde. Gracias, Carmen. Will the city clerk please read the 24 hour paragraph? The titles of the following ordinance and resolution numbers on the agenda were available to the public at least 24 hours prior to this council meeting and therefore may be read by title or agenda item only. Ordinances numbered G6952, 6964, 6966, and 6975 through 6979, S48449 through 48492, and resolutions 22010 through 22012. Nicely done. We will go to the minutes and then I'll turn to our city attorney to explain the role of public comment in a city council meeting. The June 3rd, 2020 formal meeting minutes were submitted to Councilman DeCicio. Councilman, do you have a motion? I move their approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? June 3rd meeting minutes pass. The June 8th, 2020 special formal meeting minutes were submitted to Council Member Garcia. Council Member, do you have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Passes unanimously. Uh, do we have a motion on boards and commissions? Motion to approve mayor and city council boards and commissions nominations as revised. Second. Any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Motion passes. Uh, I will turn to our city attorney to explain the role of public comment in a city council meeting. Thank you, mayor. Members of the public may speak for up to two minutes to comment on agenda items to be discussed. Comments must be related to the agenda item and the action being considered by the council. General comments that go beyond the scope of the agenda item must be made in the citizen comment session at the end of the agenda. The city council and staff cannot discuss or comment on matters related to pending investigation, claims, or litigation. The city code requires speakers to present their comments in a respectful and courteous manner. Profane language, threats, or personal attacks on members of the public, council members, or staff are not allowed. A person who violates these rules will lose their opportunity to continue to speak. Thank you. Vice Mayor, do you have a motion on liquor licenses? Motion to approve items 4 through 14, except item 5. Second. Any comments? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Passes unanimously. Item number five is in Councilwoman O'Brien's district. I, um, related to Padre Murphy's, I'll turn to the Councilwoman O'Brien for a motion. I move to approve item five. Second. We have four members of the public to speak on this item, three in support and one opposed will begin with the applicant, David Gill, followed by Tom Author in opposition. David, the floor is yours. Thank you for taking the time to uh, listen to me. My name is David Gill. I own and operate Padre Murphy's. Um, I know at the end of the day, all I want to do is what's right for my business and my family, my livelihood, and that is to ask for an approval and uh, moving to turf paradise for our are wagering on the horses. So I won't take much else of your time. I just want to say thank you. 
And uh, again, I'm asking for an approval. Thank you. We'll go next to Tom, followed by Brian. I'm on. Hello, can you hear me? We can, Tom. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, Council Members. Uh, my name is Tom Author, and I'm one of the owners of Arizona Downs. Uh, I'm a native Phoenician, as are all four of the partners own the property. Uh, please excuse me for one brief moment while I, while I uh, attempt to refresh everybody's memory as to how we got to this point. I think some of you, probably all of you, remember the uh, thing, the events that took place prior to this. Uh, I, I suspect you have heard or will hear that Turf Paradise uh, in encouraging the, the proprietor, Padre Murphy's, to breach a valid contract with us is to explain it away as it's what Arizona Downs did to us. This is completely inaccurate. When we finalized our OTB agreement with the previous owner, the lease between Turf Paradise and the owner had expired and they had refused to renew it and contacted us directly. We did not initiate any contact. Again, the lease had expired and in Mr. Dave Johnson, an employee of Turf Paradise, words at the 61021 Arizona Racing Commission meeting, he had canceled the city license for Padre Murphy's and that license does not exist anymore. So while we waited to be contacted by the proprietor, waited for the lease to expire and not be renewed and waited for Turf Paradise to, in their words, cancel the license so that it did not exist anymore. In essence, we acted as responsible members of the community. Turf Paradise continuously contacted the new proprietor, Padre Murphy's, making a succession of offers until they got to a number where the proprietor, Mr. Drill, thought it worthwhile based upon TP's misguided legal advice to breach a valid contract with us. Uh, now, you may also have heard something about this was an asset sell, sale. Again, this is nonsense device, confused people experience these inexperienced these types of transactions. But even if you buy this asset sale argument, the transfer Arizona Downs contract from seller to buyer is expressly mentioned in the sale contract. In fact, it has its own paragraph. This notion that the new owner never intended to accept this asset is ridiculous and the contract belies it. Specifically. Brian is next, followed by David Johnson. Good afternoon, Ms. Mayor and Council. This is Brian Imbornoni with Jennings, Strauss and Salmon. I represent the applicant, David Johnson, as agent for TP Racing. I've been asked to respond to the objection made by Arizona Downs and will be brief. Uh, the facts are straightforward. Arizona Downs had an OTB contract with the prior owner of Padre Murphy's called Padre Murphy's Glendale LLC. The business was sold and the new owner signed an OTB contract with TP Racing. Arizona Downs has no right to continue operations at that location for several reasons. First, Arizona Downs has no contract with the new owner. The new owner acquired the business as an asset purchase. It purchased the tables, chairs, equipment of the prior owner. It did not purchase the LLC or assume any of its contracts. So the new owner is not bound by the contract of the prior owner. Second, Arizona Downs does not have a sublease of the property as it claims. Arizona Downs contract was with Padre Murphy's Glendale LLC. That company did not hold the lease with the prior owner that was held by a different company. So Arizona Downs cannot be a sub lessee. But uh, third, and most importantly, that's not how it works under Arizona racing regulations. An OTB contract does not attach to a specific physical location. Any change of man management or ownership or change in the plan of operation requires new approval from the director of the racing division. And this was recently confirmed in a letter of guidance from the director. So uh, finally, in the end, the arguments raised by Arizona Downs are matters for the racing division. The racing division has jurisdiction to determine whether Arizona Downs has any right to continue operations. We contend that it does not. We submit. Our final speaker will be David Johnson. Uh, Honorable Mayor, members of the council, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to speak. Um, I will just uh, be brief as I as possible. 
Uh, what you have here is a situation where a person purchased his uh, a new bar and Turf Paradise and the new owner of that bar decided to come to terms on an agreement. Everything is in compliance with the Arizona Administrative Code as far as the re racing regulations go. The only thing that is lacking is the approval of the local governing authority, which in this situation is the Phoenix City Council. Uh, we have gone to the Arizona Racing Commission. The Arizona Racing Commission has told us to reapply with the city. We spoke with uh, several members of licensed service services at the city of Phoenix. We have filed the proper paperwork. We have gone through the posting process. Everything is in order and we would ask that you would approve this, uh, this application. Thank you very much. Thank you. That concludes public comment. Do any council members have comments or questions? All right, seeing none, all, um, all those in favor of the councilwoman's motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Nay. Motion carries. One, okay. Uh, it was Sal. So motion carries, I think, eight to one. Yes, Mayor. We next move to the payment ordinance. Item 15 is related to the American Association of Airport Executives. Do we have a motion? Don't we need the omnibus? We have to do the omnibus. Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry. Thank you. Um, City Clerk, are we ready for the ordinances, resolutions, new business planning and zoning? Yes, Mayor. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion? Motion to approve items 19 through 73, except the following. Items 15, 30, 31, 33, 48, 56, 58, 78, 81, and 82. Noting that item 80 is requested to be continued to June 1st, 2022. Item 81 is as revised. Item 82 is revised and corrected. Item 83 is requested to be continued to May 11th, 2022. And excluding these items for public comment, item 78. Second. Any corrections? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 9-0. All right. Now the payment ordinance. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion on 15? Move item 15 through, well, actually, uh, four, 16 through 25, excluding item 15. Did it? Okay. Everything, I'm sorry. I'm a little uh, off in being in here. <laughs> uh, move item 15. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Pastor? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 8-1. Items 30 and 31 are related item items related to apprenticeships. Vice Mayor. Move item 30. Second. Second. <laughs> oh, sorry. And then I'll turn back to the Vice Mayor for comments. Um, I just want to thank uh, staff and everyone on our council for moving this apprenticeship program. Uh, it has been long in coming and now we are making it actually a reality and making sure that there's uh, classifications and dollars behind it. Thank you. Councilman O'Brien. Thank you, Mayor. 
I'm excited to support um, this item as well as item uh, the creation of apprenticeship classification for all units within the city's workforce is uh, definitely needed. And this is exactly the kind of forward and long-term thinking the city needs to address our workforce shortage problems. Uh, additionally, these items will allow us to grow our own employees by bringing them in as apprentices and provide them with the ne necessary skills for a future long-term career with the city. Across the country in all aspects of business, the need for employers to become competitive with their offerings and trading is crucial to their ability to hire a qualified workforce. This is just one of a few steps we need to take to become more competitive in our ability to hire in all of our departments. And I look forward to seeing how various position classifications utilize this new tool in our growing workforce. Thank you. Thank you. Additional comments from council members. I'll join my colleagues in being very excited about this item. We have a great apprenticeship program and this will allow us to be more nimble and expand it, investing in our employees and providing great training while improving the services we provide to the city of Phoenix. Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 9-0. Woohoo. Keep it going. Vice Mayor, do we have a motion on 31? Uh, move item 31 that also has to do with apprenticeship. Uh, I'm hoping a 9 0. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? <laughs> Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. Well, yeah. Come on. <laughs> Garcia. I like Laura's enthusiasm. I really love it. You bet. Garcia. Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Pastor? Woohoo, 9 0, yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes unanimously. We go to item 33 related to premium pay under ARPA 2021. Vice Mayor. Yes, I uh, move uh, premium pay under ARPA 2021 to eligible city employees. Second. Motion and a second. Any comments? Mayor. Roll call. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Councilwoman. Thank you. Yes, I just want to thank Lori and the team for, for, make, for making this happen. I know that we still have a long some way to go to getting everyone vaccinated, and I'm hopeful that this will help um, to continue on on that on that pace that we're at, where more people are getting the vaccine, and people um, are happy to see that we're incentivizing folks um, to be able to be able to do this. And um, and I'm glad to see the numbers are trending down, and our vaccinations are going up. So excited to be able to support this. Thank thank you, Laurie. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman, and sorry. Thank you, Mayor. I also wanted to echo my support for this. I know um, our assistant city manager, Lori Bays, shared with the full council the percentage of vaccinated employees went up from 51% to 66% following um, the premium pay incentive. So every single unit in our city saw a double digit percentage increase in reporting vaccination status. So I'm very hopeful that this final nudge um, will encourage more folks to do so. We know we're not fully out of the pandemic, and um, this is going to be very helpful to our city employees. So I'm excited to support this. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. No. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. No. Stark. Yes. Waring? No. Pastor? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 6-3. Item 48 is related to Deer Valley Airport Restaurant. This Mayor. is in Council District 1. Mayor. Go ahead. Mayor, there's an item. We, we skipped 
three items, and so I just want to get them. Uh, we need to do uh, 16, 17, and 18 together, so I'm going to make that motion and then uh, vote on it, and then we and um, move to then item 48, if that's okay with you. Thank you, yes. Okay, I'm making a motion for 16, 17, and 18. It's part of the pay, payment ordinance. Second. Thank Second. you. Any comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. DeCicio? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Pastor? Yes. Gallego. Yes. Passes 9-0. Woohoo. All right, now we'll go to item 48, Councilman O'Brien. I move to approve item 48. I'll second. second. Mayor, um, this is certainly a really long time in coming since the pandemic. The restaurant space at Deer Valley Airport has sat empty and served as a sad reminder of what many small business owners and community members lost because of COVID shutdowns. Today, we'll be voting to approve a new restaurant for the space, and I really couldn't be more thrilled. Awarding this contract to Kind Hospitality means my community will once again have a meeting space for their community alliances, block watch groups. It means our travelers and neighbors can stop into our terminal and enjoy a meal with family and friends. And it means once again, plane enthusiasts from all over the valley can watch our North Valley planes take off and land. Kind Hospitality is bringing to our community Barrio Brewing Company. Barrio Brewing is a Tucson-based microbrewer with one location in Tucson and another at the Mesa Gateway Airport. Previously a classic diner, Barrio Brewing will transport, transform the space into an industrial concept using locally sourced materials while providing an earthy down-home dining experience which will serve as the anchor and phase one for what's to come for the reimagining and reutilization of the Deer Valley Terminal. Featuring local microbrews and regional favorites, Barrio Brewing will provide contemporary Mexican cuisine and traditional pub favorites. I look forward to the day Barrio Brewing opens its doors to Phoenicians and jet setters. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor. Councilwoman Stark. I just wanna add that this is one of the most entertaining venues we have in the city. There's nothing like enjoying a meal and watching these planes take off and land. It, it really is a lot of fun. So I'm happy to see that we've got a restaurant returning to Deer Valley Airport. Thank you. Thank you. Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. DeCicio. Yes. Garcia? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Gallego? Yes. There we go. Passes 9-0. We next turn to item 56, which is related to improvements at Hans Park, and I'll turn to Councilwoman Ansari. Thank you, Mayor. I'm very excited about this item. It is critical as we move forward with plans to revitalize and really transform Margaret T. Hans Park, which is not only a benefit to District 7 residents, but residents all across the city of Phoenix. This amendment specifically will help ensure that by 2023, the public will see a complete activation of the Central Plaza with day and night programming featuring visual landmarks, shade elements, gardens, a playground, a cafe pavilion, and public restrooms. I'm really glad that we are taking the necessary actions uh, to continue with the construction of these park improvements. So huge congratulations to the Parks Department, but also to the many public and private partners that we've been working with who have gotten us to this point. And with that, I uh, move to approve item 56. Second. Motion and a second. Additional council comments? Council Member Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Nothing on this, but just wanted to take this as good as time as any to wish Councilwoman Ansari a happy birthday for tomorrow. It's going to be her birthday, and uh, 
glad to say happy birthday here at Chambers. So happy birthday. Thank you. Oh. Wonderful. I'm sure <laughs> part of the thing she'd like for her birthday is a great park in her district. So there we go. And we, we want to also thank our public private partnership um, partners, including uh, the downtown Phoenix, the PCA community and, and others who are making donations to make this possible. Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. And happy birthday to me. Uh, yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Gallego. Yes. Nine zero for Passes your birthday. Nine zero. We next go to item 58, which is related to a traffic signal at 67th Avenue and Vineyard. I'll turn to Councilwoman Ansari. Thank you again. Like item 56, this one is a very needed and welcome partnership. Uh, this one with Maricopa County's Transit Department to deliver safer streets uh, for the Levine community. Um, this is especially important for families who are driving on 67th Avenue to get to Trailside Point Elementary and Park. Currently, this area is just a four-way stop and has needed a traffic signal to meet recent growth and heavy traffic it usually sees from residents who are using Baseline Road, um, which is a very, very busy arterial road in District 7. Um, so very pleased to see this item come across the agenda today and make it, uh, and the fact that it's been made possible with the Streets Capital Improvement Project funds. So I move to approve item 58. Second. Second. Any additional comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. Yes. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Stark. Stark. Yes. Thank you. Waring. Yes. Pastor? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 9-0. Another gift. Pinky's up. We'll forever think of this as Councilman Ansari's birthday traffic signal. There we go. We next turn to item 74. Do we have a motion? I move item 74. Second. Any comments? Roll call. I apologize. One moment, Mayor. I just Isn't was trying it 78? To, I was trying to verify. I think we already voted on item 74. I think we're on item 78. It's mine. Okay. I received a message from our deputy city manager about item 74. We do not need that. I apologize. Yes. We actually, we need 78, 79, and 80. Next. Yes, Mayor. Thank you for your patience. The next item is item 78, and then we need a motion on 79. I thought that went on the omnibus. The omnibus that was made was for items 19 through 73 and then excluding items. Therefore, we still need to um, make motions on items 78, 79, I'm sorry, 78, 80, 79. I can't read. I apologize. Mayor, I see what happened. I think in the omnibus, we approved uh, items 19 through 73. That's why we went back to 16 through 24 or 19. And then we didn't capture 79. Good detective work, Councilwoman Stark. That was. There we go. 
I apologize, <laughs> Mayor. Yes, the omnibus was made for items 19 through 73. Right, so yeah. we already okay. did correct the 16, 17, and 18. <laughs> and so now our next item is item 74. Oh, so we have to do 74 through 77? 77. Yeah, 76 and 77. Okay. Apologize so for that. I and make a motion for 74 through 77. Second. And, and adding 79. And 79. I concur with that as a second. <laughs> Any comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. Yeah. Garcia. Yes. Guardado. Yes. O'Brien. Yes. Stark. Yes. Waring. Yes. Pastor. Yes. Gallego. Yes. That's is nine zero. We next turn to item 78, which is the northwest corner of 33rd Avenue and Grand Avenue in the vice mayor's district. I'll turn to the vice mayor. I move to approve. Second. I do have comments. Vice mayor, please. So uh, this request was for a density waiver um, which provides us the opportunity to facilitate additional housing and services for the community members at risk uh, in the unsheltered population. I'm supportive of the additional units the proposed density waiver would permit with the understanding that the applicant has committed to partner with Community Bridges, Inc., CBI, to provide services to residents. It is the provision of these wraparound services and placement of a full-time CBI navigator working 40 hours per week on site that provide the structure for this project to succeed and benefit our community. And what I wanna add is that this is as long as the owner and uh, affordability is happening with this project. Um, in addition to that, I know, I know that what the applicant has outlined for their service model will require a use permit and will afford uh, them the additional opportunities to collaborate with the surrounding community about their proposal. I commend the applicant for their commitment to work with a third party nonprofit organization like Goodwill to provide job training services to the residents of the property. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, I will now go to uh, Jason Morris on behalf of the applicant. Mayor, Jason is not on. The line. Okay. Um, Vice Mayor, we do have um, Bob Kalalapi and Elizabeth DaCosta uh, sh sh uh, available to speak if necessary. Would you like to hear from either of them? I believe they're supportive of the project. But if they are like, wonderful. Yeah. Uh, they are only to speak if necessary. So are we ready then for roll call? Yes. Mayor, can I can I just uh, I want to I, I want to say this is a great project. I like the idea of adding goodwill into the mix for drop for the job training. Um, so it really does provide true wraparound services. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman Stark. All right, roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio. Yeah. Garcia. Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 9-0. We got that one again. <laughs> All right. I believe we next go to 81 and 82, which are companion items. Our Deputy City Manager, Alan Stevenson, will introduce. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Uh, item 81 and 82 are related items, as you noted. Item 81 is a general plan amendment, and 82 is the 
correlating zoning case. The area is generally bounded by 91st Avenue to 99th Avenue, Thomas Road to Campbell Avenue. Uh, item 81 is the general plan amendment for 326 uh, acres of that uh, area, and that is to add some uh, various residential densities in a portion of the Algodon PUD. Item 82 is the uh, corresponding uh, major amendment to the plan community district zoning for the entire 600 acres, uh, but it affects just a, a larger portion of it uh, as well, and that particular zoning uh, case uh, does cover 300, uh, some, sorry, 600 acres for the larger area. The uh, applicant has made several revisions uh, at the request of uh, Council District 5 and working with the community on the general plan amendment and the zoning case, and they both were approved uh, by the, the Planning Commission with those uh, changes. With that, staff does recommend approval uh, of the general plan amendment item 81 per the memo from the Planning Development Deputy Director dated March 30th, uh, which reduces the overall uh, applicable area, and then also uh, approval from the uh, memo of the Planning Development Director, Deputy Director, uh, for the zoning case uh, of April uh, 4th, 2022, for the PUD zoning case, and with that, we're happy to answer any questions. Wonderful, thank you. Do we have any questions before our extremely short public hearing? All right, I will open the public hearing. Uh, Stephen Anderson, on behalf of the applicant, is here for questions. Do any council members have questions? Close the public hearing on both 81 and 82 and turn it to Councilwoman Guardado. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, um, this general plan amendment and the accompanying zoning change represent the development of the largest vacant parcels in the Maryville Village, approximately 350 acres altogether. The Algodon Center project before us is a mix of housing, commercial, and retail opportunities, office and employment space, and educational investment. It will include a partnership with industry leaders like the LGE design build firm to bring our residents the restaurant and retail amenities that have been historically missing from this area. LGE will also take the lead in designing and build much of cutting edge office space. So hopefully our lines of 30 minutes at the drive-thrus will cut down to maybe 10 to 15 minutes at the drive-thrus is something that Chris Mackey and I have been talking about for the last three years. Agadon will bring multi and, and single family housing to our community with partners like Lenar and Taylor Morrison. Their investment in West Phoenix is a testament to the quality of life and education provided in our community. I know how excited the leadership of the Pendergast Elementary School District is to welcome in new families. The Agadon Center will also feature a new state of the art campus for Westmac to provide the educational and career training that will lead our residents to the jobs of the future. At this point, we have so many 16 year olds dropping out of high school and being able to have Westmac on the west side to provide those opportunities for our children. I think it's the, it's the road um, for a lot of our children to be able to look at, at other jobs and being able to complete and get their high school diplomas. This 30-acre campus represents the single largest investment and in educational opportunity for our Maribel community since I have been on council. Today's Algodon project comes from the hard work and cooperation of neighborhood leaders, Maryville Village planning members, the development team at John F. Long, their representatives at Gamage and Burnham, and our team here in the District 5 office, and let's not forget about our planning commissioners. I want to start by personally thanking Maryville Village Planning Chair Jean Deary, Vice Chair Jeff O'Toole, Ken DuVos, and all of the members of the village. They looked at this project with a critical eye in understanding the importance it represents for residents throughout West Phoenix. And one of the comments from them to me was, this is our last chance to get Re really great retail, um, good jobs into the, into the, into the west side. Um, their, their dream is to have people be able to shop and be able to live on the west side and not have to travel more than 45 minutes to get to work. Um, so this is something that the residents are very excited about. And I also want to thank Steven Anderson and his team at Gamage 
and Burnham for their diligent work on the project and the patient and open door communication they maintained with my team and our residents throughout the process. And finally, I wanna thank John F. Long and their entire team for their vision and investment in the Maryville community. The project they are bringing forward today represents months of thoughtful dialogue and important compromises, and I thank them for their commitment to our residents and our community future. With that, Mayor, I would like to make a motion. Well, do you want me to do them together, or should we do them separately? I guess that's my- We need two. Two? Okay. Two motions. Okay, so first I'm gonna make a motion to approve item 81 per the planning and development memo dated March 30th and adopt the related resolution. Second. Wonderful, congratulations, Councilwoman. You've worked very hard on this and it'll be a great asset for your community. I'll join you in, in congratulating John F. Long, Stephen, and the whole team that has been working with the community on this a very exciting day. Additional comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. DeCicio? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Guardado? Yes. O'Brien? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Castor? Yes. Gallego? Yes. That says 9-0. There we go. All right, Councilwoman, ID 82. Motion to approve item 82 per the planning development memos dated March 30th and April 4th and approve the amendment to the plant community district. Second. Second. Any comments? Roll call. I'm sorry. Yes. Decisio? Yeah. Garcia? Yes. Guardado? Mayor, can I make a comment? Please do. Yeah, and I also just um, just wanted to thank our economic director, Chris Mackey. I think as when she came into the picture is when things really moved along to where the community wanted things to move. So again, Chris, thank you so much for your diligent work in the district, so yes. O'Brien? Yes. Stark? Yes. Waring? Yes. Pastor? Yes. Gallego? Yes. Passes 9-0. Congratulations, Councilwoman. That concludes our agendized business of the meeting. We now turn to the final portion, which is our public comment, and I'll ask our city attorney to introduce this portion. Thank you, Mayor. During citizen comment, members of the public may address the City Council for up to three minutes on issues of interest or concern to them. The citizen comment session is limited to 30 minutes. The Arizona Open Meeting Law permits the City Council to listen to the comments, but prohibits Council members from discussing or acting on the matters presented. Thank you. We have three members of the public to comment. We'll begin with Karen Olson, followed by Ann Ender. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. Okay. Um, yes, my name is Karen Olson. Um, I was here two weeks ago, and so I had emailed um, these, and so I'm going to read them. Um, the pursuant to Chapter 4, uh, Section 22 of Phoenix City Charter, um, I, Karen Olson, a citizen of the citizen and resident of City Phoenix, City of Phoenix. Um, excuse me. I'm just a little nervous because these meeting spaces always are. A little bit that and I've had to wait two weeks to use my voice. So I'm actually going to take part of my three minutes to take a deep breath. I'm still here. Okay, um, and hereby um, the petition, I have a petition to the city council to. 1 enact a resolution calling on Phoenix city council to hold Sal DeCicio accountable for his. Using his public office to collude with plea that is P. L. E. A. And M. C. A. O. Uh, to pursue known false criminal charges against demonstrators from the 2020 uprising. Um, two, uh, to enact a resolution to produce a report on the costs thus far of responding to PPD's misconduct against protesters in 2020. This includes the following: a list all list of all law firms defending these protest cases and how much they've charged the city thus far. B 
list all list of all law firms the city has contracted with in relation to the Department of Justice investigation, either because they were hired by the city of the city to defend it against the DOJ investigation, or they were hired to consult the city on needed policy changes and recommendations. C, uh, total cost of investigations conduct thus far, including the total cost of the Ballard Spar investigation, 21 CP investigation and ASU investigation. D, total amount of overtime the city awarded the PPD in relation to the protests of 2022, sorry, 2020. And then E, total amount of grant money the city received to respond to protests in 2020. Um, so that is the end of my petition. I mean, I would like to take the rest of my time uh, to just sit uncomfortably, honestly, in this space. Um, I have lived in Arizona all my life. I have lived in Phoenix the last uh, somewhere between seven to 10 years. I work for small businesses throughout the city. Um, I am involved in this community and I hear as you all do these different amendments and agenda items that you are too. Yet if we don't sit and question these spaces and stop trying to silence the voices, are we doing anything in terms of the justice for all people? Uh, I, I sit uncomfortably in this space with you. I am part of it too. Silencing our voices and giving us 30 minutes in a WebEx platform that is extremely challenging to get to is so class-based, it hurts. I hope you sit with this uncomfortability. Thank you. And Ender is next, followed by Mark Rodriguez. And the floor is yours. Well, wow, how do I follow that? Um, Mayor Gallego, Vice Mayor Pastor, and members of the council, I'm Ann Ender, President of Operation Blue Ribbon. And our primary mission is public safety. So any efforts that we have, whether to hide blue ribbons in hopes of boosting morale or focus on recruiting at an event, must result in engaging neighborhoods and communities to bolster and foster public safety. When Vice Mayor Pastor assumed her role as the Vice Mayor, she commented about how she looked forward to helping recruit more police officers. So when the Vice Mayor and Council Garcia publicly requested another policy meeting to discuss the city's part in or failures in working with the Maricopa County Attorney's Office regarding these cases of protesters, it just didn't seem like the way to recruit officers. Those efforts are duplicitous. They're not a good use of taxpayer funds or the council's time. So knowing that these cases are under investigation and there's litigation pending, why, why, why ask the mayor to do this when they know you can't? I believe it's just another attempt to discredit Chief Williams and Chief Kurtenbach. That said, in the time that I've been volunteering to support morale and look for solutions for recruiting and retaining police officers, I can confidently say that this is not how we are going to accomplish it. Ask yourself what person is going to want to come to Phoenix and be a police officer with these kind of efforts ongoing. So as I've stated before, this kind of negative posturing only distracts the council from conducting city's business and, and it has a very destructive impact on our police department and our communities. My recommendation is, is that the vice mayor and the council then have, um, who both, by the way, have the highest violent crime rates in the city, engage, visit, and meet with the precincts either in your districts or citywide. Thank you. Thank you. Our final comment will be from Mark. Hello, Mayor Kate Gallego and everybody in the city of Cal. It's good to see you again. I mean, hear you again. It's because, can you guys hear me okay? We can hear you, Mark. Can you say yes, you can? Yes. Okay. I was speaking about, Mayor Gallego, can you say, instead of we can hear you, can you say yes, you can? Yes, I can hear you. Can you say yes, you can? Yes, you can. All right. I like to say that instead of we can hear you. Can you say that next time? Please, Mayor Kate Gallego. I appreciate it. It's because I'm just here to talk about happy birthday to Yasmin Asari. It's because I gave her a card two days ago at the mail. Because It's because Mayor KG, Lord, Vice Mayor Laura Pastor, you guys rock. And I always like to call you guys. It's because it's kind of fun kind of talk to you and all that stuff. And you say, yes, you can, right, Mayor Kate Gallego? 
Yes, you can. Yes, you, who said that? Vice Mayor Pastor, Mark. Hey, Lord Pastor, I wish you could ask me questions and all that because I like asking questions because I like seeing you know how to do Japanese language one of these days when I come when I see you. And it's because, Yazzie, happy tomorrow's birthday. And also, and also, I always like to call you guys and then I'm talking to you all the time and all the agendas and all the items and all that stuff, Mayor Kate Gallego, the Vice Mayor Lord Pastor, members of the City Council, and the Vice Mayor Pastor, Domo Arigato, Sayonara, Vice Mayor Pastor. Ding dong. Thank you, Mark. I did get your card. I really appreciate it. That concludes our final portion of today's meeting. We are adjourned. Announce the launch of the Arizona Safe Phone Zone program. We're excited today because this represents really 